Janome. Hi, I'm Joanna Marsh of Custom Quilts, and I'm going to show you how to use the Janome Quilt Maker Pro 18 to alternate free motion motifs with line work. So, something that I run into a lot whenever I'm custom quilting a quilt is I'll have areas that have a lot of negative space. And uh, something that I try to do a lot is provide visual interest. So instead of just quilting like one free motion filler all over the entire negative space area, if I can, I like to add a little more visual interest by alternating different motifs. And so I'm going to, I'm going to take uh, one free motion filler motif, which I'm going to use like these smoky swirls, which you'll see me quilting here in just a minute. And I'm going to alternate it with line work. You can also use a ruler base and a Janome ruler, long arm ruler to quilt these if you'd like to, if you're not as confident with your uh, straight lines. But I will say that it's pretty simple to quilt vertical straight lines with a long arm, as long as you just, you know, take your, your body and keep it in, in position, try to move as little as you can. And whenever you're quilting from front to back, whoops, Whenever you're quilting from front to back, it's not very difficult to just keep your body still and only move your arms toward you or away from you. And so that's why I'm opting not to use a ruler base. Typically it goes faster if you're not using a ruler whenever you do this, but if you want your lines to be very precise and very evenly spaced, like you need them to be exactly one quarter inch apart or one half inch apart, whatever your spacing is gonna be, then I would recommend using a ruler for that. So, um, I've already tested my tension. Uh, I did some sample stitching off to the side of my fabric. And today I'm going to be using this dark colored thread on this kind of aqua or sea foam fabric. Generally, whenever I quilt a quilt, I'm going to almost always use a matching or a blending thread that matches the fabric that I'm using or quilting. But for these tutorials, it's a lot easier to see a contrasting thread against the fabric. And so that's why I'm using this really dark blue on this light blue fabric. So you'll be able to see the stitches a lot easier. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. And before I start quilting, there are a few things that I'm going to tell you. You can use any free motion motif for this. You don't have to use the smoky swirls that I'm gonna be quilting. You could also use like the circular swirls that are kind of repeating and echo each other. You could use pebbles. You, can, you could use really anything. The whole point of this tutorial is to show you how to offset different sections of free motion with straight lines in between those sections. And so that way it'll make your free motion pop and it will add visual interest to your quilt. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already got my, my thread loaded on the machine you can see right here and I've got matching thread loaded in the bobbin case of the machine. And so I need to disengage my gears because I had my computer going a little while ago. So I'm going to reposition my camera so that you can see my fabric, where I'm gonna be quilting. And you may not be able to see very well because the, the marker or the pen that I used, I used a water erasable marking pen. This is by, uh, I believe it's by sew line it says stylo water erasing pen and so what I've done is I have marked a boundary line so that I know where I'm going to be on camera so if I quilt over here you're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing that's really what I've marked these boundaries for but you can also do that on your quilt if you need something else like a visual boundary for yourself um, and then I've marked a line here, just so I know I don't need to, to quilt any lower than this. I've marked another boundary here, just so that I, I remember to keep my quilting space compact for this tutorial. And then I've marked another line up here. So you can kind of see this top line. Uh, this pin is really good because you can just kind of mist it with a little bit of water after you're done and the lines disappear. If I was gonna be quilting this really quickly, which I am, um, I don't know why I use this pin. There's also an air erasable marker that you don't have to mist anything with water. It just disappears after, I don't know, I don't know, I would say like eight to 12 hours. It really depends on the humidity level 
in your sewing room or wherever your quilting space is. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm going to mark four diagonal lines across this square boundary that I've drawn. So I'm gonna mark, let's see, where do I want these? I'm gonna do one here, and this is not exactly diagonal, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. I'm gonna mark another one here. Another one here. These are kind of evenly spaced. Doesn't have to be exact to get the effect that we want. Okay, so I have got four diagonal lines that I've marked. And the reason that I made these lines is they're gonna be my guide for where my free motion quilting goes. So I'm gonna be centering my free motion quilting along these diagonal lines. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna grab my machine. And before I get started, I'm going to press the needle up, needle down button to bring my bobbin thread up. And I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna do just a couple stitches in place to secure my thread. And since this is just a practice piece for me, you know, this is not um, someone else's quilt, I'm just gonna clip these threads away. Normally I would bury them if it were a, you know, a real quilt and not just a practice quilt sandwich. Okay, so I'm gonna begin by doing these swirls. And they aren't an overly complex motif, but if you aren't comfortable doing these, you know, after you do a little bit of practice, you can do them. You can always pick a different motif to do that you're more comfortable with. So for these swirls, these just kind of mimic ocean waves. So if you think about that, Okay, so I'm stopping at my top boundary line you can see right here, and I'm going to stitch across my boundary line and come down here and start my next row going up diagonally. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start my second row of free motion quilting. So that's our second row done. The next thing I'm gonna do is I need to retrace and start down here for my third row of quilting. Okay, so now I'm ready to start my third row of free motion quilting.
now I'm gonna trace down this outer boundary line and come down here to start my last row of free motion. Okay, so we have finished all four sections of our free motion. And you don't necessarily have to do the same motif throughout. You, can, you could do different ones for each line if you wanted to. The thing that we're going to do now is we're going to be quilting vertical straight lines approximately one quarter inch apart from each other. And the reason I chose that spacing is because it's approximately the same density as my free motion quilting. Um, so I wouldn't wanna do like lines that are one inch apart because that's not going to give us the visual impact that we want. And so my lines are gonna be about a quarter inch apart. And I'm also not going to touch these lines to my free motion. So what I'm going to do is before I reach or approach my free motion, I'm going to quilt like an echo, just a small echo to help me travel about a quarter of an inch offset from that free motion. So I'll have my, I'll have my quilting path start here, even though my thread line is here. So I'll be starting here and then traveling up and then I'll stop about a quarter of an inch from this thread path and then I'll quilt another path to my next vertical line, then quilt down, and then I'll just keep doing that over and over again. And this, this is really helpful for a couple of ways. So this is faster than using a ruler for me personally. And so I, I really just like the effect that this has with the little offset lines because I'm not having to retrace over any of my existing thread paths. And so you don't have like an imbalance of dark, darker lines in some parts on the free motion than in others. And so that, that kind of bothers me, um, especially when you're using such high, highly contrasting thread. If it was a thread that blended in with our fabric a little bit more, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. But with this dark thread, or even if I was using like black thread, you would really be able to see where I retraced in some uh, parts and where I didn't. So, we're gonna get started in this top left corner and I'll show you exactly what I mean about the quarter inch offset path. And I'm gonna go ahead and just retrace my path to come over here. Actually, I take that back. I'm just gonna cut my thread, that's faster. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and press the needle down button, then needle up to bring our bobbin thread up. I'm gonna hold both of those threads while I do a couple of stitches in place, and then I'm gonna trim those away just to get rid of those. Okay, so I'm gonna begin about a quarter of an inch away from my free motion quilting, and then I'm gonna quilt my first straight line away from me. Okay, now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm gonna to quilt towards me. Okay, now once I approach my free motion, I don't wanna to touch it again, so I'm gonna offset it and quilt away from that. And then I'm just repeating that over and over again. And you can see my spacing wasn't exactly a quarter of an inch right there, but it still has the same effect. So don't panic if your spacing isn't just exactly perfect. Especially when this is practice. So you can see the quilting here and you can see my offset quilting. So I didn't come down and touch my free motion. So let's go ahead and quilt the second empty space, negative space that we have with straight lines.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut my thread. So we've got that section done. And now we're gonna come down here and quilt our third section of negative space. Let's trim these threads away again real quick. maybe you can't see but this line is really crooked because I moved while I was quilting um, it's always a good idea to stop if you're gonna take a step just because it's harder to stay straight vertically or horizontally whenever you're walking with the long arm but it's okay because this is not a real quilt right this is just our practice okay I'm gonna go ahead and start the fourth row little spot over here. And that is it. So there's not a whole lot to this. So there's the free motion component and then there's the straight lines. So you can see how much more definition this has Whereas if I had just sent free motion all over, you kind of lose, lose what it is that you're looking at. So it definitely gives it an element of a little bit more visual interest. So I hope that you'll give this a try. It's super easy with the Janome Quilt Maker Pro 18. And don't forget, you can also purchase the separate ruler base and the ruler accessories from Janome if you're interested in doing ruler work instead of the free motion, you know, freehand straight lines.